I want to read just one verse tonight from the Word of God. It's a well-known verse, and we're turning to John's Gospel, chapter 15. And it's a verse that I'm sure has been quoted and read across our land and our nation today, but it's this very verse that the Lord has led me to this week for our gospel service this evening. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse number 13. And the Lord Jesus speaks these words, and He says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And we know that God will bless those words to our hearts. Tell me this tonight, what more can a man give tonight than his life? If a man gives his life tonight, man, that man gives his everything. There's nothing more any person can give than one who gives their life. Nothing has brought more death and destruction to the face of God's earth tonight than wars and conflicts. God Himself only knows the millions who lost their lives in two world wars and in recent conflicts. You know, life tonight is a very precious thing. And yet this text teaches me the wonderful truth about love tonight. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. It's one thing to give away your land. It's one thing to give away your possessions. It's one thing to give away all these other things. But to give your life You can give nothing more. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. It was sometime during the First World War. A young soldier just of 18 in Flanders fields was found in the mud, and he was dying. A comrade found him and picked him up in his arms and nursed him and cuddled him as he was dying. And as he was dying, he was struggling to say something. And the soldier picked up with this dying lad. He was only a lad. And this soldier picked up with this dying lad said, he said, when you get home, when you get home, tell them of us that for their tomorrow we gave our today. Friend, tonight there's nothing more a man can give than to give his life Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Tell me something tonight. How far would you go tonight to prove to someone that you love them? Tell me this. What would you be prepared to give tonight for the name of peace? Would you be willing tonight to give your life and lay down your life for your friends? And tonight I want you to look, first of all, because 
There's a great love declared in this text. Greater love hath no man than this. And you know, friend, love is the greatest story ever told. And this love story is told through an old rugged cross. Greater love hath no man than this. And when the Lord Jesus laid down his life. And I want to take you to Calvary's cross tonight. And I want you to see the ugly scenes. There's nothing pretty about the cross. There's nothing beautiful about the cross. I want you to see the ugly scenes of the cross. And I want you to see the Savior's bloodied face. I want you to see his thorn-scarred brow. I want you to see tonight the nails in his hands and in his feet. And I want you to see tonight the dying form of one as he hung upon that cross. And all I can say to you, my dear unsafe friend, greater, no greater love ever was than this. See his love tonight. His love conquers hate. His love tonight, his love conquers anger. See, his love tonight, his love overcomes all things. Greater love tonight hath no man than this. Love is prepared to pay a price. Love is prepared to give. When I look at Calvary and I see the cross, I see love in all its fullness. The greatest verse in the Bible, perhaps, is John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 says, For God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Get that wee bit. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Franklin Graham, Billy Graham's son, posted a video, a very moving video on Facebook about a month ago. It was a policewoman who was sentenced for I don't know how many years for shooting a man accidentally. And as the judge passed sentence on this policewoman, one of the brothers stood in the dock to say something. And the brother says, she deserves to rot in hell. She deserves never to be free again. If anybody deserves to rot in hell, it's her. But then the other brother, he comes. He comes to the, to the box. He says, I want this girl here to forget what my brother said. He says, I want this lady to know I don't hate her. I want this lady to know that I love her. I want this lady to know that there's one greater than me that loves her, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He turns around to the judge, who was a female judge, and says, Your Honor, can I do something? Can I go over to her? And the judge gives permission. And he went over. And in his hand was a Bible. And he went over to her and he threw his arms around her. And he says, Dear, I don't hate you. I love you and I will pray for you. Because I, my greatest desire for you is to know Christ as your Savior. And he held her tight. And he squeezed her. And he held on to her, and two of the two of them began to weep in the courtroom. 
Everybody looked amazed. And some in the courtroom said, what kind? What kind of love is this? What is it? What's going on? And you know what that girl said, that policewoman? She says, she never knew such love ever existed. You know, friend, this evening a great love is declared tonight. You see, love suffers tonight. Love, love knows pain tonight. That's true love. And the greatest love ever declared was the love of God through Calvary's cross. You see, on Calvary's cross tonight, every heartbeat of God's love is seen. And their friend and love for you and I, the Lord Jesus Christ was willing to give his life for you, to give his life for me. And you know, friend, tonight, as we, as we think of that policewoman, when one brother says you deserve to rot in hell, but the other brother embraces her and tells him, tells her that he loves her. Ah, oh, friend, that's God tonight for you. Sinner friend, God embraces you and says, I love you, and I gave my son for you. And you know, friend, tell me this tonight. Does God's love not touch your mind? Does God's love not touch your heart? Does God's love tonight not create some sort of a conscience in your mind to think that he loved me so much? Ah, friend, tonight, the loving heart of that brother spoke love to that policeman. Ah, but the very heart of God is seen in the cross tonight. And through the cross tonight, God shows His love for you. And listen, it's a love we don't deserve tonight. None of us deserve it. But yet He loved us. And He gave Himself for us. Hell-deserving sinners. Friend, tonight, see the bleeding hands of Christ. Do you see them tonight? Do they not speak love to you? Do you see the pierced side of the Lord Jesus? Tell me, does it not speak love to you? Do you see His pierced feet tonight? Do they not speak love to you? Oh, He loves you tonight. A great love declared. And I want you to notice in this text tonight, there's a great love displayed that a man would lay down his life. Yes. Tell me this tonight. Would you lay down your life? Would you be prepared to lay down your life for family? Would you be prepared, be prepared tonight to lay down your life for friends? Would you be prepared tonight to lay down your life could you make that call tonight? During the U.S. Civil War, conscription wasn't absolute. But there was a farmer called Blake, that was his name, received the papers to be called up to join the army. He didn't know what he was going to do. Why? I'll tell you why. His wife died six months prior to this and left four children. She died of TB. And he didn't know what to do. But here was the whole thing that if this man wasn't prepared to sign up and go, he had to get someone else to take his place, but, but he didn't say nothing to anybody. He had four months. He had four months to make up his mind. He had four months to sort this out. And the papers were there before him. Every day he was reminded as to what was expected of him. He prayed much about it. And as the days approached for him to sign the paper, then a door knocked. The door knocked, and it was his neighbor, Charlie Durham. And Charlie Durham walked into the kitchen of this man's home. He says, I believe, Blake, he says, I believe you've got papers to go to war. He says, you can't go. He says, I know, Charlie, I know I can't go. He says, what am I going to do? He says, do nothing. He says, I have no way. 
He says, I have no family. He says, I'll go. And I'll, to go, and I'll take your place. And there and then, Charlie Durham took out his pen and filled in the necessary papers and signed his name. He says, Blake, you're needed at home here. He says, I'll go. The man was speechless. He took his man's hand. He took Charlie's hand and he praised God and he thanked him for him. But sadly, sadly, Charlie was shot and killed during his first battle. On hearing of Charlie's death, Blake rode out to where he was recovered his body and brought it home and buried his lifeless body in his own farm and erected a little stone. And on the stone was written these words, He died for me. Can I say something tonight? War is not calling for you, but death and hell are calling for you tonight if you're not saved. I want you to know that tonight. Death and hell are calling out for you tonight. And there's nothing you can do to stop it. You say to me, George, what do you mean death and hell is calling out for me? Well, Isaiah 14 verse 9 tells us, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Tonight, you know, hell's waiting on you. Death's waiting on you. There's not a thing you can do. There's not a thing a church can do. There's not a thing a minister can do. There's not a thing a pastor can do. But the Lord Jesus Christ came, and he stepped forward to take your place. And on Calvary's cross, there the Lord Jesus stepped forward and there he paid the price so, friend, that you and I could go free. And friend, it pays for you tonight to trust in the one tonight who laid down his life for you. There's only one hope that stands between you and death tonight, and that's the Lord Jesus. There's only one hope that stands between you and your grave tonight. That's the Lord Jesus. There's only one that stands between you and hell tonight. And that's the Lord Jesus. And the Lord Jesus himself said, I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved. Oh, he shall be saved. And friend, the greatest battle that ever was raged and waged was at Calvary's cross. Because there on Calvary's cross, the greatest war waged over what? It wasn't over nations. Do you know what the greatest war on earth ever raged over? Your soul. And tonight Satan wants your soul because he already has your soul. Do you see if you're not saved tonight, you're a prisoner to sin and you're a prisoner to Satan. But Christ died in order to save your soul. He died to set you free out of that bondage, that prison house of sin and Satan. And he laid down his life to set you free. Ah, but then I want you to notice in that text a great love directed because it says for his friends. Romans 5 verse 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man will one day, yet pray adventure unto a good man, some would even dare to die, even for a good man, an upright man, an honest man, a righteous man. But Christ, the Son of God, he laid down his life. I want you to look to the cross, for here's a very important lesson. You see the two arms of Christ? Both of them are equal. Both of them are on even level. There's none higher, there's none lower than the other. They're equal. You know what that tells me tonight? Christ had to die for good people. Christ had to die for righteous people. Christ had to die for church-going people as much as he had to die for murderers, as much as he had to die for thieves, as much as he had to die for everybody else. Christ had to die for all, for all needs Christ. And you need Christ tonight if you're not saved in this meeting. You need Christ. 
And the Lord Jesus says, Him that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. And friend, tonight there is no excuse. Because you see, the Lord Jesus has paid the price through the shedding of His precious blood. And friend, tonight, beyond the cross tonight, there is a risen Savior who wants you to come to Him to set you free from that bondage of sin and shame and hell. Greater love hath no man than this, you know, that a man lay down his life for his friend. No greater love was ever displayed than the love that was displayed on Calvary's cross to save you from the punishment of sin and from the punishment of hell. And friend, here's a promise tonight. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And for as many as receive him, to them give he the power to become the sons of God. Do you know tonight, if you come to Christ, he'll give you the power to become the sons of God, and he'll give you the power to live for him. And thank God I've proved that for 34 years. And what Christ has done for others, he can do for you. There is no love tonight like the love of Jesus. What kind of love is this that gave itself for me? I, I am the guilty one. Yet tonight, I go free because he loved me and gave himself. What kind of love is this? Let's bow in a wee word of prayer together. <coughs> Friend, tonight there's not one of us can deny the love of God. Friend, tonight you cannot ignore the love of God. But there's one thing you can do tonight. You can turn your back upon the love of God. Many have done that to their peril, to their eternal peril. Don't turn your back to the love of God tonight. Open your heart. Maybe there's someone here tonight, and the Lord Jesus has been knocking on your heart's door, and your heart has been touched by what you've heard tonight. Your heart has been touched by his love. Why don't you open your heart's door tonight? Then he loves you. He gave his life for you. And tonight he wants to be your Savior. And you can leave this tabernacle tonight, knowing that it is well with your soul, no longer a prisoner to sin and to Satan, but to be born again into the family of God. We're not going to sing anymore. We're just going to close in prayer and listen, if God has been speaking to your heart, why don't you say to me at the door, George, can I have a wee word with you? We'll go somewhere quiet where we can talk it over and talk it through. Please come tonight. Nothing to be afraid of. God loves you. Christ called you. Heavenly Father, tonight we thank you for the, the message of the gospel. Lord, this message that still brings hope, this message that still brings light, this message that still brings life, pray tonight, Lord, that God the Holy Ghost will take what has been spoken and sung tonight and be the means of bring, bringing some soul to the foot of the cross and to receive Christ into their heart by faith. 
And Lord, we leave the eternal issues of this meeting with Thee. We pray now, Lord, that as we separate one from the other, Lord, that Thou would bless us while we leave. And Lord, help any that's not saved tonight to be careful. And Lord, to consider their latter end. And Lord, not to leave this, but to seek the Lord while He may be found. Bless us while we separate. Take us to our homes in safety. And Lord, tonight, make this a night of rejoicing over some soul coming to the Savior, for it's through His precious name we pray. Amen.